So I've had these kicking around for a while, and um, we've had a little bit of fun with them, but now I'm going to try and explore a bit more what they can do, because they've got some things like effects packs that we haven't tried, um, and this is a programmable microcontroller along the lines, BBC Microbit, I think. I think it uses the uh, embed um, uh, platform for uh, flashing that chip, but we will find out for sure. Let's see. Uh, headphones in here. No, uh, USB to um, micro. And yeah, there's another microcontroller here that can flash some LEDs and some triggers. Um, a push button, a sound trigger, and a light trigger. So, yeah. Or, yeah, push button, sound light. Um, resistive, I think. And this is for drawing the copper pads. You, make a, you can make things like switches. So that is a red LED. I wonder if they have RGB LEDs. That would be nice because I'm going to try and make some sort of a card. Ha ha ha. Conductive plastic, and the more you press on it, the more resistance, or less resistance there is. I presume that's what this stuff is. Okay, so it looks like Blink is already loaded. So I totally forgot about this, but the Chibitronics programming module uses essentially a modem <laughs> to program the chip. So um, there is a sound file that gets played through the headphone jack to program the chip. So it... Um, it eliminates all of the having drivers for serial ports and FTDI and all of all of that stuff. Although, if this was a bit more powerful a processor, you could probably do that embed thing. So I was wrong initially. It's not. I'm using embed for programming. It's using a modem. So what you do is you press the uh, program button here until it uh, goes red and then click upload. Now, you can see here it uh, was generating a sound file so there's an initial handshake and then it updates that. So let's now instead of five blinking it's four. Oh yeah it actually worked. Okay, so that's fading on too. So now, um, that's basically how you program those things. Um, Arduino sketches, you've got a um, basic um, set of six LEDs right here, zero through five, and then you can tag off of all of these pins um, to do other things. Um, yeah, so that's what you got. And you also have this RGB LED here. I don't know what you know, I'm going to use that for, but... Um, anyways, yeah, I can definitely see this being a workable little uh, thing, but it, it does mean you have to get power into it. And so here we have a plus five and a ground. So somehow you need to get plus five-ish volts. Now let's find out what the uh, what the actual specs are on that are. I bet I bet you a pair of three and a half volt button cells. Okay, that was a bit of a janky way of getting um, stuff loaded into the uh, browser on my phone, but um, edit it on my computer and mail it to myself and then download it and then load it. But anyways, yeah, um, let's program that and upload it. So what we did is we, um, wait, what? Grief, wrong brackets. What am I thinking? Okay, first of all, you need an array of brightnesses for starting, one for each LED. So six, uh, six element array for brightness, as well as fade amount, because that's going to change depending on where you are in your um, zero to 255 up and down, you're fading. Um, so basically what happens is you go through this loop, um, increment the brightness for the LED that you're working on. So you go through that loop six times, one for each LED. And then the brightness is equal to brightness plus fade amount. And when you get to 255 or you hit zero, you change the fade. Whoops. Uh, you change the fade amount from um, being a positive value to a negative value. So we start out with fives. Now we could change the fade amount so that they would go in and out of sequence, um, so that they would 
basically change at different rates each of the different LEDs. But anyways, that that that's something to play with. Um, so uh, so yeah, um, and so basically you get this um, wavy pattern of the various LEDs going from zero to 255, zero to 255, down to zero to 255, each one in turn going up and down, but out of sync by a certain amount because we have initial values of, um, whoops, sorry. Uh, where am I here? 0, 64, 128, 195, 192. So they start at different positions along that scale as as this starts. And then event, every once in a while, they'll all sync up. But yeah, so there you go. Okay, so what we changed was the um, fade amount for each of the columns of the, or, sorry, each of the elements in our array of LEDs. So if your fade amount is 2, it will fade fairly slowly. So that one's fading slowly. But if your fade amount is high, so if it was six, so LED three, zero, one, two, three, that's fading up and down the fastest. Okay, so clip friendly on the top there for um, doing quick tests of power and actually getting power into the circuit of coin cells will power it. Yes. A pair of chlorine cells will do it. I don't know how long that'll last, but it doesn't have to last too long. Oh! What did you just knock off? I think that'll give a good effect. I might have to diffuse this more, but yeah, I think it'll work. so simple to prototype with. I could have ordered me a bunch of these. They're like colored pencils in a way. Consumable. And that defines the form factor. It's a foreground, sky, something like that. Okay, that was a little fiddly getting the uh, bottom row on. But the conductive glue is on these stickers, so they have to go onto the copper rather than vice versa. You can't just lay a row of copper across there. You have to, you know, so first of all, insulation with just plain old tape will work so that you can uh, insulate those pads and then lay down some copper that wraps around onto the back side, onto that and then lead, lay these guys down, and there you go. That gives you a second row of LEDs, and I think that that's gonna make a, and these are much brighter, so I think this is gonna make a, a reasonable, reasonable uh, display. Now, just have to mount it inside the card and figure out how the batteries are gonna go, and we'll be done. I think it's going in the right direction anyways. The camera way overexposes it in the phone, but yeah. I think that'll work. Okay, power's off the battery. Now I just need to figure out a switch for it. Okay, so the battery holder's pretty simple. You just basically have a paper clip clipping two electrodes that you put like that. So now you've got positive, negative, don't short them out with the binder clip, negative, positive, and then so now we just need to figure out a switch for the card so that when you open the card it opens a switch. So what I'm thinking is um, just a, like a fold and pop-up book. You pull out a tab and then it pulls a, uh, a contact in, uh, pulls a contact in. So yeah, let's make that. So the design principle of that is pretty straightforward. If this is the edge of your card here, this distance is um, half of the throw. 
because it's going to fold over halfway and then it's going to fold over another halfway. So if you have that tab buried inside your card somehow and you open it, it will pull that tab over and you can use that as a switch. And it, we'll see if we can make that work. So here's what I'm going to try. I'm going to try using something like this to make the connection and that's going to provide a little bit of tension. I might need to uh, put some sort of a, some sort of a foam in there as a spring. I think that's going to work. I don't need nearly as much throw as I did on the uh, initial design. I just need a, like half that. Cool. I think that'll work. Yeah. The uh, white pen seems to work nice. Okay, so far, so good. Power with the battery. No, just figured out where the placement of the battery is. Okay, so I've got a switch. I like it. Now I have to reinforce this hinge with a little bit of um, plastic sheet, but uh, double-sided tape, some plastic onto the back of this hinge gives it um, a better, better play. So yeah, I'll do that. In principle, that's what we need. And then the overlay goes something like that. Okay. I think we've got it. Okay, so here's an iteration. It's off inside. Getting closer in the mechanical here. Um, I needed to support it a bit better in the back. Um, so it looks like it's going to be a four layer assembly. Oh, copy. four layer assembly. So there's probably going to be a support layer in the back. There is going to be the card, <clears throat> which will form another layer and that will be the outside of it. And so there will be this assembly on the inside. And then there will be the mask layer over top of here.
I think that'll work. I think that'll work. I think that'll work. So I think that was a, um, a productive bit of um, experimentation with the Chibitronics. I totally recommend them for anybody who wants to do any prototyping with um, with cards or you know some sort of art project that involves blinky lights and you need to program them and in a simple way and you can um, you can do very uh, sophisticated layout on just paper with copper tape and it works really well. 100% recommended. Uh, Chibitronics, um, grab yourself some. They're fun to play with. Thanks for watching.